day by day, is the shizzle. What it do, what it is, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your day by day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today I have a special guest for you all, and I actually am looking very forward to this episode. I uh, wanted to branch into the fitness and sports realm, um, both areas of something that I know more about probably than anything else that I know of. So with that being said, I am joined by pro athlete Kayla Simone. What it do and welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Blessed. There we go. I know your day and week is probably busy. Uh, for those who don't know, when I said pro athlete, you are currently a pro tennis player. Yes, I am. So um, you have something coming up within the next week or so, I right? I do. I have a tournament this Friday, actually, that I'm playing. So I've been training, kind of been working in the lab, been grinding, um, been off the radar a little bit. So now I'm coming back. So the um, the competition that you have, the matches, are they uh, regional, national? Um, so they're national, okay. so I can go to pretty much any place around the world. Um, my next tournament will be in Dubai in September, so, yep. Playing tennis in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's tough. And they have, well, what's the different courts? You have grass, mm -hmm. clay. Hard. Hard. Yep, and you got red clay. Yeah? Yep. Damn, that's what's up. Yep. So you're training for your uh, tournament now. So what's the day in the life like? How's it been within the past few weeks or however long it's been since you've really been seriously training and preparing for this tournament? What's the day in the life like been like? Um, You got me telling all my business to my <laughs> competitors. Okay. Um. <laughs> that can be said. That can be said. The game is to be sold. We ain't going to get Um. I eat, sleep, breathe this. This is something that I do on a daily basis. Talk about it. It's a love, it's a passion. Um, it's just constant grinding. And I don't just mean working out in the gym. I mean like emotionally getting myself like mentally prepared, mm -hmm. like meditation, praying, um, silencing my phone. I've been off my phone for like two months before I hop back on social media. Mm -hmm. Even like I'm not gonna say I cut friends off, but I kind of told them like, mm, I'm gonna distance myself real quick because I'm about to make some major moves and I need to be aligned. I need my alignment to be there. So I've really just been on like some mental grind, mm. honestly. And my fitness, of course, plays a part in it, but it's more mental than anything. So it's more mental than physical as Oh just yeah, it's 80-20. Yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. My mind tells my body what to do, not the mm. other way around. So my mind has to be stable. Damn, and that's huge. Um, you're the second pro athlete I've had on here. The other one, Damon Nicholson, shout out to Damon, mm -hmm. pro uh, boxer. Yep. I asked him what's, you know, mental, physical, and he said the exact same number, yeah, 80, okay. 20, as far as mental, mental and physical. Um, so has that, so how long have you been playing tennis for? Ooh, um, 17 years. So when did it get to the point where it was like, okay, to really excel and take it to the new level, I have to plug in mentally more than anything off gate mm -hmm. <laughs> um i started tennis um when i was 10 years old so my mom was a six-time acc champion for university of north carolina chapel hill okay ma so being her child um off gate it was mental 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 mm -hmm. and then on top of that she's a psychologist mm -hmm. so i mean i don't think i had a choice but not to think mental over physical so did that lead to you having an advantage even at a younger age to, you know, other? Because, I mean, I I played sports since I was 10, and it didn't get until maybe <laughs> senior year of high school when I really kicked in the mental part. Right. Um, For me, personally, I acted a damn fool when I was younger, and just what it is. Um, How so? What do you mean? Breaking rackets, trying to hit the balls at my opponent. I was a perfectionist. They always say tennis players are – crazy athletes because uh -huh. it's a solo sport everything is on you yeah. so managing and trying to figure out how to like multitask and win and then you know, how you start the match and how you end the match yeah i was kind of all over the place i had results though okay. don't get me wrong yeah. i you know i did very well but it came with a lot mm. a lot of emotions so i would say it probably didn't crack until maybe maybe 16. okay so yeah a little bit later so Dylan, so t you're saying, you know, it comes with the emotions and whatnot. Um, that reminds me how, like, usually it's uh, um, an elite athlete, right, mm -hmm. who maybe they usually call them, like, let's say Odell, right? 
you have athletes. Not every athlete is, you know, quiet. and But the ones that, you know, kind of express themselves more or people usually call them unstable right. or divas and whatnot. But maybe that's because... Uh, it, it was just so much in the in the pot. Some maybe comes out. Mm-hmm. Was that it for you when you said you kind of you know acted out towards, or was you just overall you was just when a big kid? When I acted out, it had nothing to do with anybody else. That's mm-hmm. one thing about me. It's always about self. So mm-hmm. and because I play a solo sport, it was all dictated on me. I win, on me. I lose because of me, mm-hmm. not because I felt like someone like actually like beat me or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So my emotions came from. Um, like I said, being really a perfectionist, putting pressure on myself. I knew what I trained for, and then when I don't deliver or execute, is anyone in my path can like can get it? Mm-hmm. Not because I'm upset with them. It's not really a personal thing. It's it's more of a me thing. It's on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's all on me. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's that's like the good and bad of being a perfectionist. Yeah. You're so hard on yourself that it does produce results, but when it doesn't, especially something that's within your control. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's like I I get I literally had to go to therapy just to kind of learn to understand how to that real the that differences, yeah. yeah. And then also like for me, like I'm an introvert with extrovert tendencies, so I'm so by myself, and I love being by myself. But I also know what it means to be an extrovert because you have to have people, you have to have your village, and so that's one thing I can say I'm grateful for. I have my village, mm-hmm. where when it's time for me to like sit back or for someone to hold me responsible or, or accountability for stuff that I did in tennis, I have that. Mm. So you also have to be open. Yeah. We are we are um relationship mammals. Mm-hmm. We are mammals, right? Right. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're relationship and communicative mammals. We're, you know, um all about, you know, communicating and building relationships with none another. Um interesting, you said you used to try to hit your opponents with Yeah. So, like, is this during the match or when, like, in between? No, it's never in between. It's during the match. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I used to be so upset with myself yeah. that I'm hitting the balls and it just happens to hit my opponent. And now they're thinking, oh, you trying to attack me. And now I'm like, you know what? Maybe I am. But see. So let me attack your ass then. <laughs> how can you tell the difference of that in tennis? Because uh-huh. you're, you're hitting. Well, uh, She wouldn't tell the difference. I can, though. She, Cause she don't know what I'm feeling. Right. Cause I'm thinking like, well, I used to talk junk like, this girl suck. Why are you losing to her? Mm-hmm. And of course she's like, hold up now, you saying I suck? I'm like, well, you do. You know you do. Oh, you used to say this oh, out yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah, okay. I didn't care. <laughs> It'd be turt on the tennis court. I didn't care. Yeah. Well, cause they know, and I know that today was just a bad day. Mm-hmm. But I don't look at it just a bad day. I'm looking like I should never lose to you. Mm. But it's not human, and it's not realistic. So. What to think like that? It's not human to think that you're not going to lose. It's you're not. Because you're not perfect. So you're yeah. going to, even if I beat someone, sometimes you're not going to beat them at your perfect game. Uh-huh. I always tell people sometimes you have to beat people at your B game, your C game, your D game. You're not going to always beat people at your A game. So you right. might have to go through stuff in order to get the W. Mm-hmm. And it may not be pretty. And a lot of times when I got the W, wasn't pretty. Mm. It came with a lot of bull. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that happens. Uh, what yeah. do they call it? A ugly win is better than a pretty loss. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've That's been there. That's for sure. I've been there. <laughs> That's so, for sure. So are you? So being a perfectionist, say you had a. Personally, you thought you didn't play to your A game, mm-hmm. but you got the dub. Mm-hmm. Are you then hard on yourself again since you're such a perfectionist, or are you kind of like, okay, eh, whatever. You mean going to like the next match? Am I hard on myself, or mm-hmm. you mean like once or, the match is over, once it's I over. go in the car and yeah, I yeah, settle yeah. down? Yeah, afterwards. Um, I mean, I got the W, so I didn't care what mm. I did. <laughs> I won, so I didn't feel. How can I explain it? Like, my mom and them are alpha females, mm-hmm. so like, for me. I, w- I felt like that was me being a typical athlete. I felt like that wasn't me being reckless. Mm. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like that's me being reckless. Like, if I was reckless, I would be like, mm, no, well, I did too much. Mm-hmm. My doing too much didn't feel, I didn't feel that effect. I felt like I was fine, honestly. Oh. Nice. I was like, I, don't, I didn't feel like there was no reflection. Only reflection was on my game. Like, what made me feel turned? Like, why did I have to get to that level? It still had nothing to do with her because I don't care about her emotions. I only care about why I did that. Because eventually when you get older, that stuff is not cute. You're going to have to, like, manage yourself. As far as projecting like towards the other opponent or just by yourself both mm. because it, it you know 
personally, you're affected by it. Yeah. If I'm so busy worrying about being annoyed with you, even though the task ain't really on you, it's really on me, I'm getting distracted. My focus is, is gone. Yeah. And so you got to reel it back in. And then you have to tell yourself, what's what's triggering or what's pissing me all the way off that's making me do that? Mm. So then. That's a good point. Me personally, when I played college ball, I was always, even before, I was always the quiet but played, but I would turn up. Mm hmm. Like, so I play defense. If I got a hit, if I lay somebody ass out, oh, I'm letting them know. Right. But other than that, I'm quiet. I don't really, you know what I mean? But if it's, a, because I don't know, like, like it's it's a rush. You know? It is. It's a general rush. Yeah. When you get a rush from a big moment in a, a sport that you're living, breathing. Right. When you get a big moment that's like, I don't know, it's. I don't know. Sometimes it's like the equivalent of sex. Like, it's such a good yeah. feeling. You know what I mean? <laughs> and me, when I played defense safety, if I laid someone ass out, that was my favorite thing right. to do. Even though it was disrespectful, it was like, I laid you out. You know I just rocked the shit out of you, but I'm going to still let you know I rocked the shit out of you. Best shit That's out. who I am, too. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah. So, that's a limit. That, that's a fine limit. So, how did we, um, so, as far as you competing professionally mm -hmm. now, uh, how did we get here? Did you play, I mean, did you compete in college as well? And how was that? And how did you make the transition after college to the pros? Okay, so I started at 10 and a half years old, which is considered late, especially back in the day when I started playing tennis. Most people I played against played at probably like four or five years old. Really? So I started at 10 and a half, about to go to the next age group, which was 12 and under, because I was about to turn 11. Um, I instantly had results. I was already probably like 30 in the state by then. So I was like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm good at this. Had a, probably a tad bit of arrogance because I was young. It's my first time playing a sport and I ended up doing well. So, you know, got humbled real quickly. Um, ended up playing junior tennis, which is 18 and under. And I was nationally ranked. So I was always top in the country. Um, transitioned to college. I didn't want to go to college initially. So I dabbled with pro a little bit because I'm like, you know, I really want to do this pro route. But, you know, having a mother that's like, education's important, you, you need a B plan. As an athlete, I'm never thinking of B plan. It's it's my A plan, because I feel like my A plan is God's desire for me. Yeah, God, we, God gives you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking like, what you talking about B plan? But she's talking about injury. Because I'm not on a football team and I'm not on a basketball team. If I get hurt, my money stops. So that's how tennis works. So it's just you. So you can go professional Straight out of high school, or straight 14 out. Fourteen years old, you can go professional. Interesting. Yep, that's the youngest. Well, I think it's the youngest you can be in any sport. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you said you wasn't thinking of be playing at first. Yeah. Um, College. Yeah, I, no. yeah. Yeah. I think <laughs> in high school, uh, thinking of you thinking of like think a like high school athletes that require college to make it to the pros, mm -hmm. that's the only reason they're thinking of college. Right. I don't think any athlete that feels they can go uh, professional is thinking of college for the degree. Right. And at that young age, it's hard to, because, you know, our decision-making ain't fully developed till 25. So mm -hmm. it's hard to tell someone at that young of age, listen, I know this is what you want to do, but you really need to college. Like, mm -hmm. pro football, cool, but that has to kind of be, you know, yeah, you can think of it as a first place, but that second place has to be kind of just as loud. Right. Well, I'll be trying to hear that. Yeah, I'm not trying to hear that. Like, yeah. especially education. Like, I was naturally smart at school, but... I was homeschooled too my um, sophomore year, but after that I'm like I don't care. But I was soft. I was a sophomore when I um, so I did go to school, public school for my whole life. But I end up being homeschooled for the simple fact for me to train to go pro. Mm. So schooling didn't really mean anything to me. But when I actually got there, I got recruited by big schools. End up transitioned to a smaller school because you know I signed late. Um, the plan was to go to the smaller school to transition to a bigger school. End up loving the school I'm at, Morgan State University. Okay, shout out to Morgan. Um, While we had it, shout out to Bowie. My whatever. Let's talk about some Bowie. <laughs> we, but we ain't into me act though. We, but Morgan right. and Bowie, we it's cool true. with each other. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't like I'm Howard. You know what I mean? And it's true. Yeah, we cool or whatever. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, I ended up falling in love with Morgan and it gave me great opportunities. And I can say this. It wasn't my time to go pro back then because my emotional state and my mental state wasn't there. My physical state was. I was in one of the best shapes of my life, but mentally I wasn't. Why weren't you? Um. Or what was the deficit that, you know? 
It's kind of um, the issue was going on with Naomi Osaka right now when it comes mm. to like mentally preparing yourself. We can physically have the talent and we can physically be there and look like a pro athlete, but when your mind is not there and you're still, I don't know, sometimes it's a delay of process. Your mind is not fully developed the way your body is. Mm -hmm. And so when that's lagging behind, you start wondering like, why is fame getting to me? Why mm -hmm. can I execute in this and in, in that department? And so for me, um, my mental was, I was so focused on pro that I, I couldn't focus on anything else. Mm -hmm. I was so isolated. That's not healthy to be isolated as yeah. an athlete. You know, it's one thing that you can be in your own cave, but you got to come out eventually and you got to rock with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. You got to, you have to learn how to talk to people. You got to learn how to express yourself and cope. And a lot of athletes that are so in their cave and trapped, they don't know how to do that. So when it's time for them to speak or do an interview or something like that, they got anxiety mm -hmm. or they nervous or I, I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. Or I didn't ask to be nobody's role model. Yeah. You know, so um, or they can't express their, their feelings. And I feel like that's one reason why you have a lot of these artists to that tend to, com you know, commit suicide and stuff like that. Because there's another part of them that's like, I just I don't want to do this. I didn't ask for all of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking for that. Yeah. So if I'm asking to be a pro athlete, that comes with fame. And that's one thing I prayed about was, you know, I want to be a professional athlete at the highest level. God is saying, okay, but that comes with something. It comes with fame. So you're going to have eyes on you. You're going to have to speak. And if I'm not prepared for that, then you're only prepared for half of the success. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, you got to take that just as serious as the on field. Oh, yeah, big time. Because that's also what sponsorships come from. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, most athletes make their money because of sponsorship, not even really because of their W's. Like, they, yes, they make money because of it, but it's because of sponsorship. That $90 million Nike contract. You didn't make $90 million because you won that basketball game, though. But that winning a basketball game got you the $90 million for the sponsorship, though. Building the brand. Right. And so I had to go to Morgan State to understand what my major was about, to understand who I was about, to, how to deal with people, um, how to navigate that on an emotional point of view. So when I come to that in a match, I'm ready and I'm prepared for it, even after the match as well. Mm, like you said, the 80-20. Yep. Do you, ever, uh, do you ever worry that that part may, even today, like do you have to kind of like walk on eggshells to make sure that part is fully secure or do you like, know that you can 100% be you and not have to worry about anything else that come with it. 100% be me because mm -hmm. I've already groomed myself what to say and what not to say. And it's not because I'm scripted. It's because that's just maturity. You know what, who to say it to, who not to say it to, and where to say it at and where not to say it at. And, it's, and, that, and you train that as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of things we have to train, like, mentally-wise or mental-wise, um, just like we do physical. Right. Like, patience discipline and even that aspect like right you said. and you can still be yourself and edit down yeah that doesn't mean i'm not telling my full truth it's just i might say it in a different way than if i was off the camera right now i would say it completely different mm -hmm. but it's still i'm still saying my truth though it's yeah. just the tone is different you know so with so gaining that uh gaining that skill and sharpening it and um, everything else you mentioned before, as far as mentally preparing yourself to where you're at now, looking back at it, where you are right now, what is the greatest takeaway, just one, that you gained in these years of being an athlete? Mm, that's a good question. Um, balance. Sometimes you can eat, breathe, sleep, the sport, and you still lose sight of yourself a little bit because one day you won't have to retire. And where does the balance come in? Where does that extra money come in? Where does yourself come in? Because once I put the racket down, I'm no longer Kayla, just the athlete. There's other compartments of me that I also have to fulfill and make sure that that's also successful. One day I'm going to be Kayla, the wife, Kayla, the mother, um, Kayla, the entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? And those compartments need to be there. So I have to learn balance. And that's one thing I can also take away from that. Nice. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Um, I would say... Me personally, I was thinking about this. My greatest takeaway is discipline. Uh -huh. Because I do stuff now, even usually more more times than not when I don't feel like it. I'm like, damn. I had to really think, damn, this came from playing sports. Right. Especially, you know, college sports, waking up 5 a.m. for, you know, workouts, practices and whatnot. And, you know, it's only tough like the first – the hardest part is actually – 
uh, getting there or doing it. Right. Or getting there. Doing it is the easiest part. It's just getting there and waking mm-hmm. up. That's the hardest part. But doing it so many times, excuse me, over and over, it got me to realize it's nothing once you get past that barrier. That's just a barrier that people can't get past. Right. But once you get past that barrier, you're good. But the rep- the uh, repetition allows you to develop the skill to get past the barrier, allows you to develop the discipline to mm-hmm. do what you don't want to do, but, you know, it's what you have to do. Yeah, and that's true because I had um, one girl come up to me and said, um, what's one of your greatest assets that, you know, if someone could talk to you, what would they say? And I, and I said discipline as well, only because I'm at the point where I'm past motivation. I'm 26 years old. You, you won't have to motivate me. At this point, if you have to motivate me, there's a problem. To me, that's stuff that you do when you're 18 and under, mm-hmm. where you're still in your mama's household, where it's like, okay, maybe I need a motivation or this, that, and the third. But I'm grown. I'm independent. I live on my own. Things are necessary, even when you don't want to do it. And that's where discipline comes from, doing things when you don't feel like it, but it needs to get done. Mm-hmm. And those are not wants. Those are needs. Yeah. Those are necessities, you know. And you mentioned you don't need to be motivated. So let me ask you, what is your greatest motivator today? Oh, yeah, it's God. Mm. I'm very religious. Yeah, it's God. It's my Lord and Savior. He says um, good wins at the end, and I'm anointed by him. And I, I consider myself good at what I do. And I, and one thing, I, you know, God tells us not to fear, but I think the thing I'm, I respect the most is that um, – as quick as he can give it to me, as quick as he can take it away. That's one thing about it. It's like God gave me, like, he gave me this gift right here, and you think I'm about to act a fool with it? Mm-mm. That's one thing when you're a kid because that's innocence, and he holds you to a different regard. I'm grown. I'm an adult. I need to be on it before it shifts into someone else's hands. Within a second. Yes. Wake up the next day and be like, oh, what happened? That quick. Better yet, it could be, it could be right now. That's how quick it is. So it's, it's, it's that respect factor. God motivates me for sure. Mm, talk mm-hmm. about it. I love mm-hmm. it. So let me ask you, you being a uh, pro female tennis player, mm-hmm. who's the GOAT? Who is the greatest woman tennis player of all time? Other than myself. And I, ha- and I, and I, ha- I have to say ah. that. I have to say that's that. Ki- that's the Kayla yeah. Simone right there. Because the world don't have to, <laughs> listen, the world doesn't have to know me for me to be great. Uh. Not right now anyway, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to always give it to Serena Williams. Okay. And that's not because she just wins. Yeah, because I, I was ready to say, Billie Jean got more, what, Grand Slam titles? She got like 39 to Yeah, Serena is almost there. Yeah. But so, so why Serena? It would have to be her off the court mentality. The mm-hmm. goat isn't the goat because they just win. It's mm-hmm. that mentality off the court. Michael Jordan was the goat before he was the goat. Yeah, like things are already like brainstorming. Like things are already happening before the happening is happening. You know, I always tell people like if you look at um, Jesus' story, he was talking prophecy at like eleven years old. Mm. He started becoming Jesus, at, who we know today, at thirty years old. So he was already. He was already that guy before it was time to be that guy. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, that's why she's the GOAT to me. She was already in constant training. Because at one point she was listening to her sister Venus. Mm. And it's been spoken that, oh, she, she's going to be the GOAT, though. But at the time we all thought it was Venus, but it was her. Because she was being trained up the entire time while everybody else was looking at someone else. Serena, so Serena was the younger, youngest? Mm-hmm. She's the younger sibling. And that's why for me personally, I can call myself the GOAT because – when Serena walked into the gate, she came from a non-traditional background, which was her father coaching her. And then in non-tradition is also her skin complexion. She's black. And not only just a black woman, a dark-skinned black woman, which means she can't mold into someone else, even if she wanted to. It is it is what it is. Um, that's kind of who I am. I came from a college background. Most people that are pro don't come from a college background. Mm-hmm. So my testimony is something completely different, and I can relate to that. That she don't she doesn't go the the traditional route. Yeah. So I am. Yeah, going the non traditional definitely does usually tend to um, a more higher, uh, more higher uh, standard level level mm-hmm. held athlete. Yeah. That's what's up. Did you see the uh, movie The King Richard? I haven't yet, and I I delayed the process because I've seen every documentary they have. Oh, so, so you I already feel, know. Yeah, so it's like I know I know what I know when mm-hmm. it comes to it, but. It still is a different storytelling. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a movie. So it's a little different. So I will be seeing it, but I haven't seen it yet. 
Yeah, I get it. I get it. It, it is like, uh, yeah, I get it. When you know the ins and outs of something. Yeah. And then they try to make like a, not the, not Showtime movie. Or what was that? Lifetime. Not Lifetime movie necessarily. What? But <laughs> a movie about it. Yeah. I was like, yeah. which one? Nah, Showtime is decent. It's Lifetime's that be the cheesy mm-hmm. joints. But when they make like a movie, like, eh, been there, saw that. Right. You know what I mean? And I heard they're making a sequel. Someone actually um, DM'd me and they were like, are you going to try for that? And I'm like, oh. That might be a good look. Yeah, that'll be a great look. <laughs> damn. I mean, be a good look right there. Will they? Damn. Will they? Will they not cast Will? For... Uh, you cannot do that movie without casting Will. Will Yo, is King Richard. They've been. They've been. That's that's the dude right they, there. They've been stepping on his toes, man. That's true. They but I would say this: like the bad boys. And... I don't know if they canceled. I think they just delayed it. Delayed it? Because I don't want to say canceled. Right, 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 right. He can always. I feel like Allegedly. with great word, yeah. time and mm. PR, he can make a comeback in a different way. And also, let's be real, it ain't the first time Will has popped somebody. It wasn't. I mean, I, he That's smacked the one. Yeah. Dude, yeah you, you know what I'm talking about, Yes. Right? <laughs> like, the hell, man? He smacked the butt. This one has some force. Mm, it did. Yeah, we ain't got to go that, down that rabbit hole, though. Um, so... Uh, how long were you such a fan of Serena's? Was it as a kid, even? Oh, yeah, big yeah. time. When she was young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned you played tennis since you were 10. Mm-hmm. And your mom, did she put you into it, or did you kind of like, I want to try this out? Okay, so how I came about, I actually played soccer before I played tennis. Okay. Um, it was the last two weeks, I think, of summer. My mom was like, I need to put you in somewhere because... My job is starting, and I need to transition you for, like, an all-day camp. There was a tennis camp that was all day. and ended up falling in love with it for the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was seven years old. I couldn't stop talking about it for, like, a couple years. This and is I, soccer? No, this is tennis. Tennis. The tennis camp? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was in tennis camp for just two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, school started. Didn't play any sports because my plan was to be like my mom, do track and field. Um End up talking about tennis for like a couple of years, and my mom's like, "What you talking about? You played this sport for two weeks, and mm-hmm. probably not even good, and you talking about tennis?" So she's like, "I'm gonna put you in tennis class," and the rest is history. Mm. Just fell in love with it, That's and also I was the type of kid that, um, cause I'm a I'm a country girl, so you had to come in on you have to come in the house when the street lights came on. Yeah. So. I was at the place where I was like, dang, I want to play outside all the time. And tennis did that for me. Mm-hmm. I can go on the courts like 9, 10, 11 p.m. at night and everybody's playing. Yeah. And it's structured, you know. So yeah. I felt like I could play outside all the time too. So That's what's up. Mm-hmm. And and shout out to your moms because <laughs> for placing you in it and not yeah. necessarily pushing and forcing you in it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean by that? Because you know how parents try to live. Well, if you looked back when I was younger, somebody would have told you that my mom was forcing me to do it mm. because she was such an intense parent. But that wasn't the case. It's because my mom's a, a D1 athlete. Mm. So she's like, I lived it. I know what this looks she like. Knows what but it it's takes. not because she put pressure on me. She's just saying, don't waste my money. If we're going to do it, do it right. right. Or you're asking, go. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I chose to deal with that. Yeah. I chose to also deal with my mom's attitude towards it. So that wasn't force. That was so a did, choice. Was it okay? So she gave you the choice of like, if you want to take this serious, I know what comes with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I couldn't quit midway though. So like, say if I was playing a tournament and I'm like, you know what, I quit. I don't want to play tennis anymore. She'd be like, Oh fuck that! Mm-hmm. You gonna finish this tournament and yeah. you're gonna win it, and then we can say we quit. Mm-hmm. You don't quit when things are not going well. You let, already let things go well. Mm-hmm. Just throw the deuces up. Yeah, that's her. You already made the verbal agreement. That's what right. you want. You can't change me. Right. That's actually so on point. <laughs> and I say that, but well, first let me ask you: um, when or if if you you know uh, want kids, would you put them? Would you put them in a sports? Um, a sport, yes. Uh, tennis. Um, yeah. They can only do tennis. They couldn't. I want to. I want. So say you have a a girl or a boy. And they want to play basketball. They, they just saw South Carolina turned up. She just saw South Carolina right. turned up. And she want to play basketball. Um, I'm a jock, so my kid can play any sport. Okay. When it comes to tennis, um, it's a little iffy with me. Um, coaches are finicky out here. Um, not the most genuine. They'll coach, take all your money, and don't know shit about tennis. Um, so I also know that I. I think it's tough for me for the tennis part because I, I can catch myself coaching tennis and I don't want to. Mm. I don't want to do the tennis thing all over again. I've already lived it. And I can tell with my child if we do the tennis thing and they happen to love it and do well at it, I'm going to be like, dang, I'm going to have to do this whole thing again. I'm going to have to relive it. And so there's a part of me that doesn't want to. There's a part of me that wants to just, like, put my kid over there with another coach. But I don't trust another coach because your mama did it the best. 
So why would I, you know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like I'm going to have to monitor. So God willing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah. any other sport I'm fine with. My grandfather was semi-pro in baseball and stuff like that. I feel like that's why I was good at tennis. But, yeah, if my child want to play any sport, I don't care. Okay, so it runs in the family. Pops yeah. Is. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, but, um, damn, that's a good point as far as would you want to be, if they, if, say you have a daughter, Ma, I want to take serious, I want to take tennis serious like you did. Mm-hmm. And you're like, all right, <laughs> do I, you know, do I really give it that energy? Because right. you're kind of, like, nervous to do so. Um, if I, know, I, I know how stressful it is. I know what the bullshit that came with. And I also know that it's a white man's sport and it's a luxury sport. And I know what goes into it. And you're going to have to play it correctly, even the, mm. the politics that go into it. Mm. And I'm going to have to. And I, of course, I don't know how that generation is going to be. Only could talk about what's going on now. By the time I have a kid, who knows? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And um, essentially, you would do to the kid as your mom did to you uh-huh. letting him or her know okay we got to focus on your mental first uh-huh. and i think that's now that i think about it that may be what leads to how these kids are so far advanced i mean even if it's not necessarily just physical like the iq of a sport right it may come from that you know they're like oh your parent is you know forcing another usually have like dads who have sons who are quarterbacks right and but they, you know, they're so advanced because that dad, yeah, he was their coach. He was this his coach. It may not be because he's trying to live his childhood dream to the kid. He's giving him the mental part off buck, so that's already an advantage. Right. So that's a good part. If I have kids that, you know, uh, and they're like, you know, I would, so I would definitely force my kids early on to any and every sport. Mm-hmm. I would like just try on the fun aspect. Right. I think every kid, every kid should play sports. For one, the physical part mm-hmm. and the discipline part, yeah. you know, and the teamwork part. The communicate it's a lot of uh, attributes that are coming out of playing sports, especially at an early age, that can kind of, you know, um, they, that can moment, use the, use as momentum towards their teenage yeah, and I totally agree with that. adulthood. So I would be like, okay, listen, let's try every sport. Have fun. What, what sport you want to play? You want to be like Steph Curry? Cool. Let's do basketball. You want to <laughs> run? You got all this energy? Cool. Let's do track. You think you're faster than everyone? Let's do track. So at an early age, I would want them to try every sport possible. And then I would, you know, sit them down. Or if they, I would wait. And if they come to me and say, uh, Dad, I want to take, I want to I want to be, you know, I want to go to the NBA. I want to go to the NFL. But I want to go to the MLB. But what would happen if you have a kid that's not good in that? How about you have a kid that's just like, that's not good. I like to do this, mm-hmm. but they ain't that good in it. Uh, so we, Are we still pushing them so to do, do it? So do they know that they're not that good? They know, or they should know. Okay, then boom. That's perfect. <laughs> they should know. That's easy to deal with, opposed to if a kid wasn't good and said. You think so? Yeah. I've seen some kids where, like, they terrible, like, awful mm-hmm. Oh, but dad, I still want to play. Why? Okay, okay. Why so you you're saying play? like that? Okay. <laughs> Why? I would still let them play. If they're awful, I would still let them play up mm-hmm. until maybe I, even high school. Try out. Their coach would be the and one I to And I say that because how about you're wasting time doing something where you could be feeding them into something they're great at. And maybe it's mm-hmm. not even sports. Maybe it's academics. Right. I don't know. Maybe it's music or yeah. something, you know, or say arts. I have an artist or a tech kid not good in sports, mm-hmm. but they like playing the sports. Right. So I would make sure that most of their energy, uh, time and energy goes towards what they're good at, but still have sport on the side. Just they like doing it, you know, because if it's not that, they're going to do something they like doing. So if it's not that, they be playing video games. I agree because I feel like that's an outlet. Yeah. I feel like you everything you do, you don't have to be great at. But yeah. it, it, it's actually, I think that comes with mental performance. Mm-hmm. It's an outlet. So it gives you positivity and yeah. it helps you put less pressure on the things that you actually are great at. Exactly. So I would let them use it as that. Yeah. I wouldn't now if it if it, uh, you know say the opposite end of the spectrum they're good at it mm-hmm. and they want to take it serious. Okay, then a bulk of your energy right. is going towards this, and we got to find something else for that out, outlet, as you said. But you know, I would let them know right. if they're like if they're good at it. You know, if they got my jeans and they're good <laughs> at it and they want to go professional, mm-hmm. I would sit them down and tell them, all right, listen. It's not going to be the most fun thing. Like, yeah, you're having fun with it right now. I want you to have fun and love the sport, but the training part is going to not be fun, right? Is is not, but it's going to be necessary for you right. to get. You just preparing for the test to the pros. Yeah. Do you still is is red pill blue pill? Right. Do you right right? And yeah. if they take that blue pill, 
okay, bet, let's get it popping. Don't like your mom said, don't quit mid tournament. Right. You know what I'm saying? You you make the choice. We about to get it popping. At the right. end of the season, if you don't love it, cool. Once you I think with anything, once you ain't having fun with it, you should be done with it. But if you really want to get it popping, okay, bet, let's go. Yep. I agree with that. All right, so of course with being a professional athlete, um, you know, health and fitness is key. Even today, say you weren't uh, playing tennis anymore, mm -hmm. would you still take your health and fitness oh, yes. as serious? Absolutely. I still want to be a sponsored athlete when it comes mm. to that. Um, sponsors from like supplements, um, sponsorship for impacting people, influencing them in a way of, because you're still an athlete no matter what. There's something, there's something that doesn't just stop. It never leaves. That yeah, never especially leaves, so. when you reach that collegiate level and further, that's a that's a thing that someone can ever take away from you because the mindset is stuck. Um, I'm not saying that if you're in high school, that doesn't play a part, but there's something about that collegiate level. It is. It's different. And you're actively playing. Yeah, that's it's, very it's, different. That's different because, like you said, yeah. you literally have to eat, sleep, and breathe it. There's, yeah. The only off time is when you're studying or eating or sleeping. Yeah, because you kind of get can get away with some stuff in high school yeah. and not be all the way on point and still exactly. somewhat be on point. College, mm, nah. especially like football. Normally in college, you can have a 90-man roster. Everybody ain't playing on that field, though. Mm -hmm. And how many guys are on the bench that says, oh, but I'm an athlete. He mm -hmm. was on an athletic team. Yeah. I don't know if I would consider you an athlete necessarily Yeah. because um, you're not going through what I'm going through, mm -hmm. not even close. On the competitive level. Yeah, yeah, competitively, but even the pressures off the field to, to maintain scholarship or even try to get a scholarship, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So even let's say – even if let's take out the sponsorships, mm -hmm. hypothetically, take everything out, mm -hmm. still take a fitness serious. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I forgot who I was talking to. It was like, why, why take that serious? Why work out? We're not playing sports anymore. You know, why work out? So when people say, what's the point to you? What's the point? Even if it's uh, being an athlete mm -hmm. excluded, mm -hmm. what's the point? Um. Yeah, my goal is to be pro. Mm. At the like, and I'm saying like, if I'm talking as a kid yeah. perspective, like, yeah, my my job is to be pro. But outside of this, it still comes down to it's a lifestyle. Being professional doesn't just stop on the tennis court. It's a lifestyle. When I say I want it to be a lifestyle, that means even when I retire, I'm maintaining my professional health and my wealth. Like I feel like people think that. Lifestyle stops when you reach the goal. It doesn't. Because technically, my goal never stops. I always feel like I'm the underdog when it comes to stuff like that. Just for the simple fact that I raise my, the bar even higher to the point where that's where my discipline, my motivation actually does come from. So for me, like, it, yeah, it's, it's a lifestyle thing. It's not a moment thing. Yeah. Sometimes we think like, oh, but it's in a moment. Okay, once I conquer that or once I don't conquer it, I'm done with it. It's like, nah. I was for real about this. Mm -hmm. I'm, this is an ongoing process. And also, who wants to be unhealthy? Yeah. Especially when you were in the field of, of wellness and fitness. Why do you want to just go ahead and just be unhealthy? Exactly. That just doesn't make sense. You live life feeling your best, looking your best, mentally being your best as well. So, like, why won't you just continue that? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's definitely, like, one of the best advantages that come with it. Like, how athletes, even afterwards... You rarely see, like, an athlete afterwards mm -hmm. that just completely loses. I mean, maybe, like, when they're, like, in their 50s or something. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, Like, in their 30s and 40s and maybe even still 50s, it's usually athletes that still look great. Right. Like, um, uh, Shannon Sharp. Yeah. He's been out the league. Super fit. He's jacked, even still. <laughs> Super right? fit. And that came from, you know, the whole lifestyle. And um, But, yeah, I definitely agree. That's, like, a, a, a high that I'm still – I still get from, you know, uh, working out. Um, pushing myself, you know, competing with myself mm -hmm. because it's like, damn, I, that was such a good feeling when I was actually in the moment. I'm still bringing the moment to myself right. even if I'm off the field and whatnot. I agree. Um, so when you work out now and, do, and you train and whatnot, uh, do you prefer by yourself or with a trainer or a partner? Um, by myself and with a trainer. Most definitely. I feel like you should always have somebody that pushes you. Mm. When it comes to that partner thing, I'm not opposed to it. But normally my MO is what a trainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone that's very invested in me. If you're not invested in me, shout out to Adrenaline Rush Fitness, by the way. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, if you're not invested in me, that's a problem. Mm. Because you can't just come to your job and be like, oh, well, you did fitness for the day. Mm-mm. I need you to love what you do just like I love what I do. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, the motivational part definitely comes with it. Um, I love working out by myself. Yep. I do get, I you definitely get that extra uh, push and motivational factor from a trainer mm-hmm. or from a workout partner, whatever may have you. But I've just always been the type, I love working by myself. And a question that people, or something that people tell me, because they know I like working by myself, they be like, dang, I want to work out, but I ain't got no trainer. I'm like, just go. That's what I do. They be like, yeah, but I don't like, I don't be motivated to work out by myself. Yeah, but you need to, because majority of the time you're going to be with yourself. Because I can say there's days where I'm not with my trainer. And like he said, trainer don't stop. He actually motivates me to to keep training Even because it doesn't stop. Him. It doesn't stop. And also tells you how bad you want it. And also it's a time of reflection. And also I can say this just based off of my trainer. Um, you just got to keep the, the mentality there. Mm-hmm. You know, you still can learn from what he told you and then apply it by yourself. Yeah. That's what great teachers are too. That's why I always say like Pat Summon is great at what he what she does. Carries on outside the classroom, carries on yeah. outside the gym and whatnot. So okay, so say they don't say it's someone who hasn't even started with a trainer mm-hmm. to even get that type of uh motivational from from motivation from to begin with. Mm-hmm. And it's just them still like, I don't know, I'm just I'm just not motivated. Right? What do you think? What would you tell them if you had to put yourself and like a trainer's shoes or like a motivational shoes. Okay, I would say, well, first, ask yourself why you're not motivated. Are you not motivated because you feel like you're gonna be judged once you get in the gym? Are you motivated because you have a lack of information? First, you gotta crack that down and then we can get to the next step. Because for you to say you're not motivated, that you pretty much say you don't wanna do it. Or you're trying to find an easier way out. Mm-hmm. And sorry to tell y'all, fitness is probably one of the toughest things you could possibly do it's no easy way out that's why you get results because it's challenging Mm -hmm. you don't get results because it feels good because if it felt good we all will be doing it and Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't do it exactly (laughs) it's tough and it's and it's kind of uh ironic fitness how it takes maybe two months to see a certain result and if you stop for a week it's gone like that. that's true and it depends also on your body type your metabolism Mm -hmm. Um, it depends on your stress and anxiety. Because I know for me, like, I technically have the ideal athletic body type, but my body type holds weight very well, mm. muscle and weight. So if I gain 10, 15 pounds, it may not look like nothing. Versus someone that doesn't hold weight well, that's naturally petite, that looks real different on them. Mm. So then you have to tell yourself, what am I eating? How's my stress and anxiety? Is it the difference between female and male, estrogen and testosterone? You know, a lot of those things play a part in it. So I'll also say, once you get past of knowing what your motivation is, also know what the goal is. Are you trying to gain weight? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to maintain weight? And then once you get there, do research on your body type. Because what works for Shannon Sharp ain't going to work for him on yeah. your body type, for example. Oh, I would look like Shannon Sharp. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, more like, I'm more like Dion right now. Yeah, but it's like it's two different body types. So yeah. like you say, like what works for you may not even work for me. Mm-hmm. So, you know. That that's also plays a play in it. That was actually a great answer. I like really? that. Instead of just saying, <laughs> get your ass up and do it. Right. Don't ask why you ain't motivated. Just go. You're like, nah, start with the foundation. Find out why. I really like that part. Yeah, you got to know your reason why first. Because mm-hmm. then your why would change once you actually get motivated. Yeah. So, um, speaking of motivation and motivational feedback, mm-hmm. what suits better for you, positive or negative motivational feedback? Oh, both. Mm. I love Choose what, one. I need one. Choose you one. You need one. Yeah. Um, that just has the slight edge. It got to be negative. Negative? Yeah. I like talking shit. Yeah. So I'll need you to talk shit to me too. <laughs> I'm definitely negative. Yeah, as I, don't, well. I don't need the the cookie cutter type of. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. It's always It always feels good when someone says you're doing great. Yeah. Positive this, reinforcement. This looks is good. good. Keep going at it. That's perfect. I mean, yeah. there's also there's always a balance. But because I have to choose one, it would have to be. Um, kind of negative. Nothing too crazy though, because it's like, hold up now. So what's like, but, what's one that you like? Like, what's a negative fire starter, if you would, that every time you hear it, you're like, okay, bet you in the lab cooking crazy. You're not that good at what you do. Ooh. Don't you ever talk to shit to me like that. Ooh. <laughs> someone have, said that to you? Nobody has said it to me, but someone has said it along the way. lines yeah. of that. Where, Ooh. but I know they did it. To motivate me, like yeah. you ain't really that good. You ain't really popping like that. It's like, Ooh. nigga, you thought. <laughs> Ooh. 
<laughs> you thought I wasn't yeah. popping. I'm about to show you what's yeah. up. And that's when I don't even have to talk shit. I'm going to show you what my action at that point. Mm. I'm ready for it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Because it's that... proof in the pudding. Yeah. That's when people force action from you. Mm. And then, especially when you're good at test taking, because I always say execution is test taking. When you can um, test take well and when you can uh, execute the way you're supposed to, that's why I'm confident. Mm. Because I, I, cause I'm, I'm, I'm more than talk. I'm actually about the action and stuff like that. Yeah. Like I had someone underneath my comments before. They said, um, are you really that good at tennis? And I told them, I was like, how long have you been following me? Mm-hmm. For a couple of years. I'm like, well, then you know the answer to that question. Yeah. I said, but it's okay. That question was in my head for a week. I ended up putting that video up. I said, I'm about to show y'all what the fuck it is. Because yeah. y'all playing with me. Yeah. Even though it was just one person. Mm-hmm. And one person don't really, like, get me pissed off. I'm not that, like, weak-minded. But... That question was just like, oh, maybe I need to show some content. Like, let me let me get back on my brand mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. so I can let y'all know what's up. And then he came back full circle and was like, oh, never mind. You dope. Like, oh, Okay. So let's say when you get to the point where it's hundreds of those, mm-hmm. are you still going to, is it still going to uh, spark that fire as much? Or will you realize, okay, I'm at the point, if, I'm at the point where I, where I have these, mm-hmm. you know, haters and doubters. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tom Brady, you know, he can mm-hmm. post something on IG and it's people under overrated, uh, well, not as good. Well, I hundreds and thousands now mm-hmm. that I feel like just for the simple fact that you don't know. God hears conversations that you're not privy to. They're out there. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of people that you probably don't, that will follow you that mm-hmm. don't like you. People that don't follow you that still watches you that mm-hmm. don't like you. So I feel like I already kind of have that in a sense. And, and that's, what about the ones you see? Um, Say you're seeing 100 because it's going to get there. Right. Say you're seeing 100. Negative comments, right? Well, that is why Instagram created the block. Mm. <laughs> That's also where they limit comments. So, and it's not because the comments will necessarily get to me, but I'm also human. And it's like, don't be coming on my page to talk about me. Because to me, that starts looking fanish to me. Like, you talking junk, but you really like me on the low. Because you rather base your whole day on saying something negative to me. That's like, you clearly you got a lot of time on your hands. So for me personally, that's where I just limit comment section. That's what's up. Because I, I, I don't have to receive what you're giving me. Right. I'm not saying you got to butter me up either. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is I don't have to take what you're giving me. So Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's just what it is. It's a certain uh, limit to the negativity. Yeah, mental negative. health is important. Yeah, it's huge. Um, yeah, me personally, yeah, I, I thrive off of uh, negative motivational factors as well. Um, and you said your favorite one is like if someone were to say, uh, you know, you're not that good or are you really that good? Mm-hmm. For me, um, so in high school, shout out to Coach Thompson. Senior year, we had a scrimmage before the season started. And my coach, my defensive coordinator, he was new. He was real high on me, you know, I'm like, because he was like, oh, yeah, you about to be that dude this year. We had a scrimmage before the season started. I did God awful, like terrible. Like, I don't know what it was. I just did terrible. And at the end of it, um, the team is huddled up. The head coach is talking. He's mm-hmm. a D coordinator. He steps in. He's like, hold on, coach. Davon Nixon, stand up. I stood up. <laughs> he was like, I just want you and everyone to know uh, what you displayed today was soft as baby shit. What? Yeah. Oh, not calling you out. In front of the team. Right, and I, I just had to, I just had to take it to the chin, right? right? So I, you know, I got back on my knee. I did not go to sleep that night. That's all I thought about, and it was on a Friday. So the weekend passed. Monday comes. You lit up. We have Oklahoma's, um, our biggest linebacker. I called him out on it, and one, and that hit. Soon as that hit happened, it just. After that, it was a wrap. <laughs> after that hit happened, after I hit his ass, like I was fired up and I let it all out on that hit. Mm-hmm. But that also flipped the switch, like okay. for good. So that was the greatest negative uh, motivational factor I ever had. It's called a moment in time. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Coach it's Thompson just... for that. All right. So I got one final question for you. Mm-hmm. Being in the <clears throat> end of the be- end of the end of the beginning of 2022. Mm-hmm. I just feel like that I know that this is a very uh, strong manifesting year for everyone who, you know, um, deserves it, understands it. It's a certain walk of light. That's why you're here. So with Kayla Simone, what is to come in 2022? This question is annoying because I'm still not prepared for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is to come? 
There's a couple things that's um, to come. Um, still maintain um, my health and wellness with tennis, of course, because that's like I said, this is a lifestyle, lifestyle thing. So even if I retired right now to do pro tennis, I still would be playing tennis in someone's league or something just to maintain the fact that I'm still gifted at it and still, you know, you can. I feel like those things can open opportunities for you. You know, tennis opened opportunity for me to be an intern at the Baltimore Ravens and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, and working with them and having mentorship from them and stuff. So, um, yeah, the, for the tennis part for sure. Um, I still feel like I'm living God's purpose, and I feel like because I'm still 26 years old, there's a, another there's another level of me that I still don't know what He wants me to do. I just know what He wants me to do right now. So going to 2022, um, the only thing I can say is be open. I'm also part of like a Christian sorority. So like a big part of me is community service. Mm. You know, shout out to Ada Apple Pie Sorority Incorporated. I don't know. Yeah. So what? like I'm, my life's purpose is also to do a lot of community service work. Because I feel like I'm doing God's work at that point. What you give, those blessings come back to you. So going to, I said 2022, 2023. I'm stupid. Going, yeah, and 2022, going into 2023. <laughs> going into that next year is really open-mindedness. Because I don't know what the next destination is. I just know it's moving forward. I love to say I know which highway I'm on, but I don't know the exit. Uh-huh. That, I, that is completely destined for me. But in oh. the meantime, I'm going to try every exit. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I like it. I like it. I love it. Um, Well, listen, thanks for stopping by, joining, of course. I feel like we have to spin the bin um, because, you know, with with athletics and just fitness, there's uh, so much to talk about. And like I said, I've been looking forward to this type of content um, for a minute. Um, Everyone that tuned in, whether you're listening on your podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, which now has the video, that's dope. A Google Podcast, whatever it is, I thank you for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can be kept up to date on every future episode. But in the meantime, I am Dede. This is Kayla Simone, and we are reporting out. Make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. And follow me at a at T-H-E, Kayla Simone Price. That is my apologies. I definitely <laughs> usually give my guest a plug. Okay, rewind. IG, say it one more time for them. Uh, my new one is at V Kayla Price. He should tag me in it. So yeah, and then the video is, is, is going to pop up on the video. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll leave the uh, IG in the description as well for whatever way you're listening or viewing this podcast. Cool. We are lit. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace.